All right, so we're just gonna do a quick video on getting started with EBL Flash. So basically, uh, from what I recall, the system comes with a disk that you can use to install the software to your computer. Uh, I already have it installed on here, but basically when you open up the disk, you're gonna be presented with a XDF file, I mean a executable file. So it'll be an installer package. You just click it, let it run, do its thing. Obviously I can't uh, do anything because it's already installed, but you'd let it go through and install and, and do its thing, and you end up with uh, EBL Utility on your dash and EBL What's Up Display, uh, both of which are used for certain things. Uh, What's Up Display is what you're mainly going to be using for your tuning and everything. The utility is just there to easily scale injectors. So, you know, let's just say you had a multi-port fuel injection, eight fuel pressure set at 42, 24 pound-per-hour injectors. This will set your uh, base pulse constant tables ready to go, and then you just copy paste. So you would do this if you needed to make adjustments to a bin file to work with a car. So uh, as you can also see, once uh, it's installed, you have your folder, you have your uh, go in here, and you're presented with a bunch of different things. You have a folder for your pre-bins that come with the system, uh, a table with uh, what tells you it. So yeah, you know, it's just a text document that tells you, uh, you know, the what each bin is. So it's its nut file number and then what the bin does. So simple enough. You would if you find something that's in here that's close enough to what you're running, you would just select that and flash it onto the car and move on with your day. Uh, now, if let's just say you need to make some adjustments before you do anything. You would Google Tuner Pro, which is uh, free software. Uh, there is Tuner Pro and Tuner Pro RT. Tuner Pro RT gives you some more features, uh, but for the most part, you can get away with either or. Uh, Tuner Pro RT asks for a donation to register it. Um, you don't have to; it will still work. There'll just be a pop-up that asks you to register every time you open it for like 10 seconds, which is fine. Uh, so you just click download, let that install, whatever, and it'll install to your desktop, same thing, and now you have Tuner Pro RT. So we'll open it up, and the first thing you want to do to get this to work with EBO Flash is you want to select your XDF file. So you click select the XDF, go to where you have your EBL Flash files installed to, you will see EBLv40.XDF. So you select that, and basically all that does is that's a decoder for Tuner Pro to allow it to be able to accurately read the uh, bin files or the tune files for EBO Flash. So now if you had to make some adjustments we can click open bin and let's just say we'll use the 3006 which is a six speed with aluminum heads if I remember correctly and we'll open that up and now you can see you have your tables. So you have your B table, low speed, high speed, all that. And uh, simply put, all we can do, you know, you can individually go through, move all these around. Uh, you have offsets, multiply, divide, copy, fill with value, smoothing, etc. And basically, you know, you need to, like, let's just say I have this whole table selected right now. So you want to add, you can click the plus button and it'll just add, you know. Uh, that's weird. My add queue isn't working. But yeah, so you make changes. So you can see we have. Yeah, you can execute and add or subtract, you know. And that's just simply put your add and subtract, so whatever. And then, let's just say you wanted to save it, you would click yes, otherwise no, and that would commit it. And then, eventually you would get to the point where you would actually click this save button which would then permanently save it to the bin um, or you could 
do a save as if you wanted to save it as an entirely different pin as well. Um, one nice thing is, is uh, every time you make changes, it also brings up a little text document and lets you know all the changes, like it lists things that you've changed from one to another, so it kind of, you can keep track of that. Now, uh, as far as that base pulse constant table, uh, you can see here, this is a base pulse versus back. So, if you were to do this, you could open what's up display, I'm sorry, utility, and if you were changing your injector, so let's just say we have a multi-port fuel injection, 8 cylinders, 350, 42 pounds of fuel pressure, 24 pound of power injectors, uh, we're left with that, and we're using Tuner Pro version 5. You would just select this table, copy it, and then uh, select this table, and just pasted it and now you've made all your changes and you again you can commit that and do all that and whatever so yeah yeah now you made the changes that you need to make to it for example like if that's all you had to do um obviously there's other things that you could have to change but just as like a bare minimum just showing you how you would do it all right uh, so now we're going to go into the car and show you how to set that up real quick all right now that we're in the car um, all we're going to do is we're going to plug the ECM into the computer. Uh, mine has a USB to serial adapter because my system is older and still uses the serial comms with the uh, RS-232 adapter. So, at any rate, the next thing you're going to want to do for setup is you're going to want to find uh, what port, COM port, your system is running at. So I'm going to open Device Manager. And all we want to do is, on this particular one, we have ports, COM, and LPD. Uh, so you can see prolific uh, USB to serial COM port, COM3. Cool. So that lets us know that, hey, this is communicating on COM port 3. Now that we're in the car, we have the USB port plugged in. Next thing you're going to want to do is open up what's up display. And you're going to want to go to preferences so you can see we're set up our v learn for block on multiplier which is a narrow band oxygen sensor which is what all these cars have uh you can have a minimum cool temperature maximum cool temperature smoothing factor display update uh the higher the display update the smoother it's going to be uh, i keep it around nine times a second which is pretty good for data logging you can adjust what your max tachometer reads you adjust what your red line is on your tack your max speedometer readout if the gear, if the car's in stick or in auto, temperature scales in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, speedometer scale, you know, just basic, basic stuff. So, um, we're good with that. Uh, then you have your COM port. So you can see you have a list of COM ports, so you got to select which COM port your car is actually using. Now, uh, the reason why we went in there the way we went in there is so that we can figure it out. So like right now I'm going to just select COM port 1. And we're going to just turn the car to run. We're on run. We have a check engine light. That's good. That means everything's working. As you can see, there is no data on here at all. Now remember how I said it's COM port 3. So we'll go in here, select COM port 3. And now this should all populate. It did. That's great. Now you see we have our data. So cool and temperature sensor, intake temperature, te temperature sensor, voltage, uh, space spark advance, all that lovely stuff. Um, on your UCM when you first plug it in, this might not actually populate completely only because there's no definition file loaded onto the ECM. So to fix that, what you would do is you would go to display and you can go to flash so now you can see we have flash banks so like this is like your individual prompts you have zero through seven and then as far as loading one you could click program bank or read bank to see what's on it and then you have these options for verify and set bank active so i check both of these because when i load it in it verifies that it loaded it on and then it sets whatever i just loaded in as the active one so to pick a bin, just go to select bin, um, 
Let me go to the bin files so you see our bins. Oops. Sorry, it's not working this morning. And let's go down. We said that 3006. So we'll click open. We'll go to bank seven. And then you would, you know, click apply. And now you can see it's flashing. And then flashing successful 3.3 seconds. So now on the car itself, you can watch the check engine light. I'm just going to redo the flash real quick. When you start flashing, it starts running. The check engine light goes out, comes back on. That means you're good to go. And then I just, out of habit, cycle the key off and then back on to make sure we're good to go. And as you can see, check engine light comes back on. All that's good to go. Now, obviously, I'm not going to use that bin. I'm going to use my other bin. But uh, I'm going to use my actual bin, which is down here. And we do the same thing. Apply, set active. And we're good to go. Moving on, now that we're good, you can see we have our data stream. You can watch the throttle position sensor. I'm pushing the pedal in. We got an activity. You know, you just want to make sure that everything that, that can be checked for is checked for. Assuming you're good to go, you're good to go. At this point, you would start the car. Now, once the car is running, you let it, if it idles and runs a little bit, let it warm up, and then you just want to select learn ve and for learn ve all you do is you go into whatever file is running on it so like let's just say you selected through uh you know we're using this one the bin uh zero 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 thirty so you would select that and you would click open and then it would have final tuning and it actually changes the id so it goes to 31 which means that, okay, it's learning from that one, making the adjustments and saving it to 31. And you would go, okay, whatever. So you would click save. I'm not going to in this case. But you would let it run. You would drive it a little bit, light throttle, whatever, just to get it to run a little bit. Once you're done, you would go back into here. You would click stop the learn. And then you can actually go into here and check by clicking this corrections. And you'll see it'll have plus and minuses or, and, and all that all the way around. At that point, um, you now have a corrected bin file, and you would load that in, and then you could do the same thing and learn from that, and it'll just keep stacking the adjustments, and eventually you have a very well-driving car just based off of that. And, I mean, as far as just getting it going and getting to a point where it's drivable, that's really basically it. It's pretty simple and straightforward. The majority of the legwork is getting the computer set up to work with it. Uh, the, the software on it. The driving and learning and tuning part of itself is kind of just guess and check. I mean, there's tons of resources on third gen that help you with uh, as far as learning and uh, about all the features of it. But if you could find a bin that's close enough and all you have to really do is a VE learn to get it pretty good, I would suggest going with that because then you don't have to get into any of the intricacies of it and you can have a really well driving car as good or better than the factory ECM for basically just driving it and letting it kind of figure itself out uh with that uh, that's just an introduction to the system and i hope this helps somebody out uh just one more thing uh, as far as doing those ve learns after you do several of them and you get the car running pretty good uh, you can actually pull whatever the most recent file is into tuner pro and take a look at it and look at your ve tables and uh, obviously for a lot of people, looking at it like this is kind of stupid. So you can actually open this, which is show table graph. And now all of a sudden you have uh, a pretty nice looking, you know, just V curve. And after driving around a bit, you'll notice that there's just certain areas that won't ever get hit in the uh, V tuning. And you can actually just go in and manually adjust them down and kind of smooth them out to kind of fill in the curve the same way. Um, I would recommend that because sometimes you will just hit those on like a weird idle surge or if you're a manual car. Like uh, 
popping the clutch out and back in when you're coasting can sometimes get into those areas and it could do weird things with like a, a surge or things like that. So, you know, you kind of just smooth them out to the, uh, to the same sort of space as everything else. And as you can see, this is mine and, you know, eventually you'll get something that doesn't look exactly like this, but you'll get something that looks kind of resembling a curve like this. And, you know, this is my low speed and you go and you can see your high speed. And it'll be the same thing. Now, obviously, my high speed isn't anywhere near as nice as my low speed, but you kind of get the picture. You'll have a nice thing, and you can just kind of smooth out the areas that you don't use. Like, as you can see, this high vacuum area, which is low map pressure and high RPMs, is basically only touched when you're coasting. <laughs> and even then, it still isn't really used that much, so... Uh, uh, just a little tip as far as making final adjustments. So, uh, With that, again, hope it helps somebody. Uh, have a good day.